Welcome to Worship at Hollywood United Methodist Church. We are so glad you have joined us this morning, both in person and online. Please stand as you are able for opening hymns.
All right, good morning. Any young folks who wanna join us up here and of course those who are joining online. Good morning. Okay, so I have a question for you. Who has seen the movie Soul? And if you have out here, you can raise your hand as well. Annalie, did you see the movie Soul yesterday? Yeah, what was one of your favorite parts of the movie yesterday? What do you remember from it? Do you remember something? Did you like the music? Yeah. So this was one of the few times Annalise sat through the whole thing like this, waiting to see what comes next. And what I loved about that movie is it's all about what is our passion, right? So it was soul about two different things, the music, and then what is our passion? What is our wish? What is our dream? Uh, which reminds me also today of the celebration tomorrow of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Right, Mr. Kevin? Yes, we, tomorrow. Do you guys probably have the day off? I know I have the day off of my work. A lot of schools don't meet because we're celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. and his legacy that he left for us. And he had a dream. He had a dream for our country and for our world that we would live together in peace, that we would see each other, and see that God had created every single person, loves every single person, and that we should honor and respect every person. And so as we think about our dream and about what God has given us to do in this world, we can also think about Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. So what is something that you dream or wish for? Annalie, what's something you dream or wish for? You wanna tell Mr. Kevin? Is there something that you dream or wish for? I dream um, I'm a real fairy. That you're a real fairy? Yes, that is a good Ooh, dream. Ooh, that's to have. a good one. Do you have one, Olivia? I dream about being a real fairy. Oh, wow. Oh, you dream about being a real fairy. We actually too. have some real fairies yeah? in this church, so you should talk to them. Yeah. Do you have a dream or a wish, Annalie? What do you dream about? That I could jump over a rainbow. That you can jump over a rainbow. You know what? I think you should keep that dream and keep thinking about all those rainbows you can jump <laughs> over. And now Mr. Kevin's okay, going to lead us in yeah. prayer. You can come over and join me too. I'm feeling really excluded over here. I'm going to join the group. Okay, let's pray. Uh, God of dreams and God of hope and God of destiny, we thank you for bringing us together in this church family where we can think about uh, who you are, who you've created us to be. Give, you've planted dreams and passions and um, d wishes in each of us. Help us to live those out day by day and be inspired by your spirit, inspired by people like Martin Luther King Jr. Help us to always lift up those folks who are doing your work in this world and be inspired by them. In your name we pray, amen. The amen. children will head out to Grant Hall for Children's Church. The youth will be in Grace Room and we look forward to having you there. And while we head off, we invite you all to stand and pass the peace of Christ with one another. Indeed, the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to find your seats and to center yourself. In the spirit of our wonderful sermon series, I want to invite you to take a deep breath with me. So let's breathe in and breathe out slowly. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out slowly and allow our choir to take us into a wonderful time set apart for prayer with our God.
us pray. Elohim, may your Holy Spirit cover the face of the earth, bringing vitality to all living things, freshness to faith that has sometimes grown stale, hope to places that linger in the dark, and healing to all people and places who ache for recovery. We are yours, from our first breath to our last, and in the life beyond, you have claimed us, and for this we are grateful. God, we long for the creativity of your vision for the world. You have given life to this planet. Help us to honor and preserve it. Give us the power to protect and support the nature that surrounds us, to support our neighbors and our communities. Help us to embrace the fertility of your creation and the imagination that allows us the audacity to hope for peace, for the end of racism and racist structures, for adequate and dignified housing for all, the end of war, and the reconciliations of peoples separated by so many things, gender, sexuality, religion, race, creed, and nation. Help us to live into the legacies and teachings of those who have come before us. And this morning we remember Dr. King, his important work that lives on today, that is necessary today. We thank you for his teachings, even in the moment when they disturb us and make us uncomfortable and remind us that the gospel is agitating and a call to change. We know that Dr. King's work was not about integration, but about dismantling white supremacy and its power at its core. And we pray that you will give us the courage and the tools and the strength to continue that work. Holy One, you created us from the same dirt and to this ash one day we will return. We are made of your stuff, all of us. Help us to see in each other what you have placed there, your image, your call, your hope, and your love. This morning we pray for all those in need of healing and especially we lift up our sister Susan and we pray for, for real healing for her. There are many prayers that we bring to you in this place today. And now we offer them to you in a moment of silent prayer. We are humble before you offering these prayers, these desires, these dreams, these worries. We know that you can carry it all, that you do without asking, but we thank you for your openness to receive. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that, me, that we may love what you do love and do what you do. Allow the words that Jesus taught us to pray to you to resonate with each of us each day as we open ourselves to your presence in prayer that millions of others share around the world. Our parent who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good Sunday morning, church family. Staying warm out there. My dad uh, was telling me that it's below zero where he lives. And um, I was like, that's like 45 here in L.A., it's where you get your Uggs on and your ski jacket that's never seen snow. So, supposedly 70's coming, so uh, summer, summer will be coming soon. 
Uh, let's check in, if you would. Uh, get out those phones and scan that QR code. Uh, put your name in there, email if you would like to be on our newsletter. And if you have any prayer requests, please add those as well. I get those every Monday and I share them with the pastoral team. So uh, please do that. Also, while you're doing that, typing with your little fingers, um, the next picture I have is of our compassion bearers. There we go. Now, if you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, what are you doing with your time? Um, but I posted this yesterday. Uh, we took all of the compassion bears from both this campus and Harmony. So I just packed my car full, a uh, little, little arms and legs hanging out of the hatchback. Um, and I took them over to the USC Medical Center that works with children. And they were, every year, they are so amazed with the amount of bears and the creativity. And I just want to let you know that uh, these bears are utilized throughout the entire year where children who are sick come into treatment, they're scared, uh, most of them have, haven't been there before, and they get to go to a room and pick out one of these bears that is special to them, and they get to use this bear and be like a buddy with them and a friend while they're going through treatment, and they get to take them home. And uh, Hilson was telling me a lot of times they'll always come back with that same bear. Uh, throughout their treatment process. So I just want to thank you for being a part of that mi ministry this year. Um, it really means a lot to a lot of children that you'll never meet. So thank you. Um, just a few things to get on your calendar. If you haven't got a, one of the new fridge flyers for the first quarter of the year, there's some in the pew pockets in front of you. Today starts Adult Sunday Study. Uh, that's happening in the chapel, and they're going to start on the book of Galatians. So that is led by Tim Payne and Rev Ed, if you'd like to be a part of that. That meets every other week. And then this week, <laughs> movie night returns. We're going to go see Mo Mean Girls on Tuesdays. It's moved to Tuesdays because if you're not an AMC member, it's half price. So, hey, half price tickets. So we're going to go uh, to the Universal AMC See me after church for more information on that, if you'd like to be a part of that. Next week, we're doing our blessing bag build, and that will be in the gym. So if you can be, uh, stay a little bit after church, it takes about half an hour, and we build over 300 bags for people in need. So please be a part of that as well. And then, of course, the, uh, on the 25th, from 8 p.m. to 12 p.m., the LA Unhoused Count happens, where you go out into Hollywood, and you get a little portion of Hollywood to actually uh, go around and physically count people that are living on the streets. And this helps with funding and helps, uh, in the long run, get people into housing. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you must be signed up. And there is a QR code up there. It will be also at any of the welcome tables if you want to get it later. Then on the 28th, we're very excited about Dr. Frank Rogers from the Claremont School of Theology. He's a professor there. He's coming to preach as well afterwards. He'll be talking to us about uh, the themes of his new book, which is called Cradled in the Arms of Compassion. So if you can as well, spend the day with us. Got all your Sundays planned. Uh, just real quick, a reminder about giving statements I've been asked to read. Um, on, the tw on the 10th, you should have gotten an email from Hollywood UMC. Um, and if you haven't, please check your spam um, or any of the other boxes trash. Uh, but it is uh, for anybody who has donated for the past year. Your giving statement you can download and print. And uh, if you don't get this email for some reason, we will be sending out physical statements next week. But help us stay green if you can print it out. All of these things I talked about, uh, come see me at the parlor. We're going to be in the parlor because it's a little cold today uh, for desserts and coffee afterwards, and I can answer any questions. All of these things I talked about, all the things we do here, the compassion bears, are made possible by you through your prayers, your presence, your service, and your gifts. So as the ushers come forward and we put up an electronic code for giving online, please give as you're able so we can continue to do ministry here in the heart of Hollywood. Thank you so much.
A reading from Genesis 2, 4b through 9. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. On the day the Lord God made earth and sky, before any wild plants appeared on the earth and before any field crops grew, because the Lord God hadn't yet sent rain on the earth, and there was still no human being to farm the fertile land, though a stream rose from the earth and watered all of the fertile land. The Lord God formed the human from the topsoil of the fertile land and blew life's breath into his nostrils. The human came to life. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden and, the, and in the east and put there the human he had formed. In the fertile land, the God grew every beautiful tree with edible fruit. 
And also he grew the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> this morning we actually begin our new sermon series, Breathe. As we begin a new year, let us learn and relearn how to breathe. So I invite you to take a deep breath. Breathe in truth. Refresh your spirit with God's loving words of affirmation. Breathe out prayer. Release your stress with calming, breath-oriented prayers. And breathe deeply of God's love and mercy. Discover why every breath can be an invitation to peace. We start this morning with the poetry of one of the creation narratives which God breathes into humanity the breath of life in Genesis 2. Now, in Genesis 1, it's the in the beginning story of God creating the heavens and the earth. It's the account of what happened on each day, and it was evening and morning on each day. Genesis 2 gives a different account. We're not reading the entire chapter this morning, but after God breathes life into humanity, there's the story of the creation of the other half of humanity, the tree of knowledge and the four rivers of the garden. A quick story, when my younger child was a high school senior and taking AP English, one of the assignments was to write about the creation story as poetic literature, which it is. So we had a long conversation and discussion about what the differences are between the two stories. A few days later, I see the result of the paper that had been written, and there was a D on it. My child had never gotten a D. I'm just going to say that. And the teacher had written comments saying, there aren't two creation stories, there's only one. I asked if there had been a conversation held with the teacher saying, do you know? And my child responded, oh yeah, I told him what you do for a living. He still says we're both wrong. I was in that counselor's office that next morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> And later that day, my child was moved to the other AP English class with a very beloved teacher. Now, the only thing that all of us agreed upon is that the creation stories, which, to be fair, do tend to mind meld with each other after a while, they are indeed poetic literature. Debbie Thomas has written that the first chapter of Genesis is poetry, hymn, doxology, and myth. It was in the post, if we in the postmodern world struggle to see truth in these art forms, it's not because scripture is lying, it's because our post-enlightenment imaginations are impoverished. To call the creation story true is not to quibble with science, it's to probe deeper than any scientific endeavor can take us. It's to acknowledge who we truly are and where we really come from. It's to affirm by faith the reality of a good God, a good world, and a beloved humanity. As the great Marcus Borg puts it, the creation story is strikingly world-affirming. Against all world-denying theologies and philosophies, Genesis affirms the world as the good creation of the good God. All that is, is good. But it's only when God breathed in the breath of life into the first human did life truly begin for humanity and for all of creation. Hear Genesis 2, 7 again. Then the Lord God formed humanity from the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath, the nishima of life, and the human became a living being. Breathing is integral to life itself, but also to our life of faith. Reverend Jefferson Beaker, who leads our sound baths here and at Harmony, will share with us for a moment the importance of breathing. There is one presence for good in the universe, and that presence is Spirit God, made manifest in each and every one of us. When we realize that this presence breathes in all that is creation, we can experience more fully the fullness of all that God is in creation. 
So I want to invite you to turn within and close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you, and begin to concentrate on your breathing as we rest in the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. In the breath, we touch the present moment. Keep bringing your awareness back to your breath, resting within the divine breath of God. Open your eyes if they've been closed and return your awareness to this physical space. Let us continue to breathe freely throughout the coming week. The great Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann has written that inhaling is the first thing a newborn does. Breath belongs to God. We do not own our breath and we cannot hold it, but we rely on that moment-by-moment -moment gift of God's goodness. Without that constant gift of breath, the dust of Genesis 2-7 can only remain mere dust, and eventually it becomes dust to dust. But with that gift of breath from God, we receive energy, freedom, power, and imagination. Having the gift of breath permits us to do the things that make us truly and fully human. The gift of breath enables us to be co-creators with God of each new day. The great writer Frederick Bigner says, using the same old materials of earth, air, fire, and water, every 24 hours God creates something new out of them. If you think you're seeing the same show seven days a week, you're crazy. Every morning you wake up to something that in all eternity never was before and never will be again. And the you that wakes up was never the same before and will never be the same again either. So, so what does all this mean for us today? First, that we affirm that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and saw that it was good seven times. Sometimes with the news cycle and our day-to-day -day responsibilities and even the way people drive on the freeways, we neglect to see the goodness of creation. The winds have been strong this past week, but they have pulled back the curtains of the glory of the foothills that surround us. That's goodness. As I sat in my dentist chair a couple of days after New Year's, the south-facing windows of the office allowed me to see palm trees swaying back and forth. And I was grateful for a Southern California winter, especially in light of the deep freeze that much of the country is currently experiencing. That's goodness. All around us, we can see God's goodness if we look for it. Second, we need to breathe. St. Andrew is attributed with the phrase, while I breathe, I hope, dam spiro spero. Intentional breathing enables us to channel the spirit in new ways. It might mean incorporating breath prayers into your daily prayer time. It might mean stopping for two minutes to breathe, and two minutes is roughly the length of the video we just saw. Before writing that email response to that email that wasn't very nice, or reacting out of pain or fear. It might mean breathing new life possibilities into being. 
trusting the Spirit to lead you outside your present comfort zone. Third, we need to claim, as Brueggemann also wrote, that every breathing person always remains a potentially subversive agent in the world. When we are breathing in the Spirit and allowing that holiness to guide our thoughts and actions, by definition, we're being subversive because we aren't just following the crowd. We're seeking to be led by a power and a force greater than ourselves, the power that puts breath in all creation. Finally, we have the challenge and the opportunity to breathe new life into those places, those institutions, those entities that have grown complacent or regressive, or those that have simply stopped breathing in new life altogether. Especially let us breathe new life into how we take care of the earth, God's creation. Now, this is not something I preach about a lot, not because I don't care about the earth, because I do. It's mostly because I'm not a science person. For one of my two electives in college for science, I chose a class called Science for the Inquiring Mind. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but it actually turned out to be timely because it was fresh, because freshman year, the Three Mile Island accident occurred not many years before Chernobyl. So learning about nuclear energy and the hazards and the politics of it all was actually helpful to me to understand the interconnectedness of our global village. Something not lost on me today as none of us need to be a science person to experience and to see in real time climate change and its effects on planet Earth. Dr. King, whose birthday we celebrate tomorrow, understood that connectedness of all life and planted the seeds for the environmental justice movement, even though that term nor climate change were in the lexicon of his day. In his final trip to Memphis in 1968, where he was invited by the Reverend Dr. James M. Lawson, Jr., who is Pastor Emeritus at the Holman United Methodist Church. King confronted environmental racism in the United States as he helped lead a strike by black sanitation workers who were protesting hazardous working conditions. The strike represented one of the first organized actions of the environmental justice movement, as well as drew attention to a striking and overt example of environmental racism that sadly we have seen replicated over the years in this country. Eric Barreto has written that cheap, our cheap produce is expensive, our inexpensive water is costly, our affordable energy comes at a steep cost. Someone always pays the price, whether it's the earth or our invisible neighbors near and far. And yet in spite of that, God called the world good, and God was and is right. But in the ways we pollute the world and oppress one another, we seek to deny this divine declaration. So let us resolve in this new year to do otherwise, to count the cost of our conveniences, to join God in the declaring of a good world in which life always prevails. So family, I invite you to affirm that good world to breathe in the spirit to open up new possibilities, to claim our subversive natures for God good purposes, and breathe new life into God's good earth, carrying forth the, forth the light of God into this world. And let us always teach our children that there are two creation stories. Amen. This little light of mine.
I'm going to ask Mari Bolanask. I'm going to give you an assignment this week because Mari teaches where I went to school. She's a professor where at my college, where, I, where I'm an alum. Find out if science for the inquiring mind is still a thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> After the postlude, you're invited to come down for a time of communion. Please come to these two rows, and Pastor Bridie will serve you. Our, as Devin said, our fellowship is in the parlor today, and I hope you will stay and simply have a cup and talk with us. Go now knowing that all of creation breathes and that God invites you to breathe deeply of God's great love. Go now in peace to love and serve the world. Amen. Amen.